EA Diddle Arena on campus at Western Kentucky University. It's the site of tonight's Conference USA Clash. The WKU Hilltoppers host the Charlotte 49ers in the second meeting of the season between these two clubs. Welcome into tonight's broadcast. I'm Jeff Milby along with John Butler as you take a look at us here in the darkness at EA Diddle Arena. And John, these two teams playing well. Western uh, WKU is coming off of a loss, uh, and Charlotte coming off of a win, but two teams that are playing reasonably well right yeah, now. Yeah, Western Kentucky's playing very well. Second in the conference, they've won nine out of their last 11. Charlotte has won four out of six, so both teams playing well. Let's take a look at a couple players that you have your eyes on tonight, John, starting out for Charlotte. It is Daisy Lawrence coming off of a big performance in the win against North Texas last time out. Yes, yeah, she had 20, she had 21 points in her last game. She's averaged 15.5 a game and four rebounds. A dynamic player can score from outside and also off the dribble. And for WKU, another player coming off of a huge night last time and a loss to Middle Tennessee State. It's Maya Meredith. Yeah, she, she's really, really uh, stepped up her game. She was the defending uh, Conference USA freshman of the year. She had 21 points last game against, uh, against Middle, five out of five from three, and really rounding back into form. Charlotte coming into EA Diddle Arena looking for their second ever win in Bowling Green. What's your key to the game for them? But you have to handle the ball. Anytime you play Western Kentucky, you have to be able to handle the ball against Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky is eighth in the country in steals. They force about 20 turnovers a game. A big key tonight, will Charlotte handle the ball against the pressure of Western Kentucky? And we mentioned WKU coming off of a loss to the top team in the conference, Middle Tennessee State. What do they have to do tonight to secure a win? They have to defend the perimeter. In particular, they have to do a better job than they did against Middle. They gave up 94 points against Middle, and they do have to do a much better job of defending against the two really good guards of Charlotte and Deja Lawrence and Jada McMillan. Good sized crowd has gathered on what was a challenging weather day in the area, and they are excited for Tonight's contest, it is WKU in red playing at home tonight. And Charlotte wearing gold, our referees this evening, Bill Lawrence, Scott Yarborough, and Meta Christensen. And we are underway and pulling in the basketball for WKU is Lexi Mead, the lead guard for the Hilltopper, Hilltoppers. Rather. It's Mead, Pitts, Meredith, Hayes, and Foster, the typical starting five for head coach Greg Collins that gets the nod tonight. Rebound there for Charlotte on the first miss of today's uh, tonight's game is Lawrence coming down with the board. For Charlotte, Maya McGraw, Daisy Lawrence, Jada McMillan, J.C. Busick, and Kiana Rimbert are the starting five for head coach Kara Consuegra in her 12th season in charge. Western Kentucky starting off in man-to-man. -man. They'll switch back and forth between man and a matchup zone. Shot clock inside five seconds here for Charlotte. That shot may have been deflected on its way from Busick. And WKU comes up with a rebound. Here's Meredith driving with the left, but she can't finish. Rebound saved in there by McGraw for Charlotte, and the Niners take over. Charlotte coming off of an eight-point victory against North Texas, and they are on the board first. Jada McMillan driving and laying in with the right hand. Yeah, that was not the best uh, defensive, uh, defensive effort that time by the Lady Toppers against that screen row. Gave up a wide open layup to McMillan. McMillan, the fifth year player out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Six points in the win against North Texas. For WKU, driving in into contact is Aaliyah Pitts, and a foul is called. Yeah, Aaliyah is the Virginia transfer. She's averaged about 5.9, 3.2 a game. She's coming off one of her better games against Middle Tennessee. She had 14 points, was four out of nine from three. Foul is in the act of shooting, so that'll send Pitts to the charity stripe. So you can see on just on the lining up for the free throw that uh, most teams that the Lady Toppers face are considerably taller at almost every spot. And, and uh, same here against Charlotte. Pitts knocks down the first. She's just a 59% free throw shooter on the season. Now 14 of 23 after that make. And that gets WKU on the board to start tonight's game. Last time these two teams met came in January. 
And it was a 72-65 victory for Charlotte, January 23rd, when that game was played in North Carolina. But John, an interesting stat from that game, as the bucket is good there from McDraw for Charlotte. WKU outshot Charlotte by 31 field goal attempts in that game and somehow came up short. Yeah, it's one of the more unusual stats. It, normally, if you outshoot a team by 31, you win 99% of the time. The outshot had 31 more shots, plus turned the ball over 11 less times, 21 to 10, and still lost. And a lot of it just was Charlotte shot the eyes out, the, uh, out of it. Charlotte was uh, 20, uh, 24 out of 42 from two and nine out of 14 from three. And uh, kind of turned out to be the difference of the game. WKU at the free throw line for a second time tonight. Lexi Mead, the sophomore from Moreno Valley, California. An 85% free throw shooter. Knocks down the first, but rims out the second. An offensive board, though, will keep it with the Hilltoppers. Pitts pulled down that rebound. Here's Mead. More contact and another foul in the act of shooting. And WKU heads back to the free throw line once again. Yeah, one of the pet peeves that drives coaches crazy is not rebounding off free throws. Uh, you have all the position right here, and you can see uh, Lexi Mead getting into the, to the lane. I think uh, from the Charlotte perspective, they thought they had a lot of ball on that one. Mead rims out on the first. And Lexi's a good free throw shooter. She's 85% for the year. Already missed a couple tonight. She'll put that one in, though. And that gives the toppers an all-even 4-4 score here against the 49ers of Charlotte. A game featuring second place in Conference USA and sixth place between WKU and Charlotte, respectively. The basket there by Rimbert. Off the uh, assist from McMillan, she uh, leads the conference in assists. a three-pointer for WKU from Meredith, the player we highlighted in the open. Yes, so that, she was five out of five her last game, so six six straight threes for uh, for Maya Meredith. That's hard to do without anybody guarding you. Great passing there from Charlotte, and McGraw underneath once again lays it in for her second basket. Yeah, you're going to shoot about 60% if you're going to keep shooting layups, and so far all the buckets so far by Charlotte have been within two feet of the goal. That's a nice little high-low action that time by Charlotte. For WKU, great to see them knock down their first three-pointer of the game. That's something they do so very well, as that three from the corner is up from Foster and no good. Battle for the rebound, it'll be Charlotte basketball. Kind of, yeah, it, kind of different styles. Uh, WKU is, t is third in the country in terms of three-point attempts. They average 29 attempts a game. Here's McGraw once again. This time can't handle it. The pass off of her left hand, but she's been the early target offensively for Charlotte. Definitely has, has a size advantage inside Western Kentucky's that one is good for WKU from Foster to give the Hilltoppers the lead. Yeah, it's a nice little shot fake that time by Jalen. Jalen averages right around 10 points, six rebounds a game. We got a foul here against WKU. This is what I call the light pressure from Western Kentucky. It's a little 2-2-1. Two, two, Sometimes they'll just drop back into a little soft man, and that's all that was right there. Hard to pressure Jada McMillan. She's played over 150 games. I think she's probably seen about everything. Hit the 500 assist mark for her career in that win against North Texas over the weekend. Here she is with the basketball, veering her way to the free throw line, draws some contact, and draws a foul. And Jada McMillan will head to the free throw line. And that's going to be the second on Acacia Hayes. And that's just, you're talking about difference of, of experience. Acacia Hayes, a true freshman, only her 23rd game you see right there, taking it into her body that time by McMillan. McMillan has played, as we said, over 135 games. So a, a little bit different experience ed, ed, uh, edge for McMillan. Hayes takes a seat for WKU, replaced by... Teresa Faustino, the junior Oregon State transfer out of Portugal as McMillan knocks down the first free throw. Again, Jada McMillan, 500 assists for her career, the second player in Charlotte history to reach that mark. And one of 11 active.
effective players across the country in the NCAA with 1,000 career points, 500 career assists, and over 4,000 career minutes. She started four straight years as well. This is her fifth year, but she started four straight. Hilltoppers trail once again. Pitts drives in and can't get the friendly roll. Charlotte shooting 80% here in the early going. McMillan adds to that, banking it in. And they're all within three feet of the basket, that and free throws. Foster banging bodies down low. Kicks it out, another three-pointer goes up. This one off to the right and rebounded by Rimbert. But a loose pass, a steal by Meade. She'll kick it out. Here's a three-pointer. Misses everything. Foster keeps it in play. She drives in with the left hand, gets the bounce. Tell you what, Jalen very, very aggressive tonight going to the basket. That's a tough shot that time. She is left-handed, but she did a good job of shielding off with her body and finishing. Foster two for three here in the opening five-plus minutes of tonight's affair. And a good back-and-forth game thus far. And another turnover forced by this WKU team that prides itself on forcing turnovers. Meade kicks it out. That three, no good. Offensive rebound, put back, no good. Loose ball, and WKU tracks it down with Pitts. Meade had a hand in the scrum. A great hustle that time by Western Kentucky. Faustino now. Shot clock under 10. She drives in. There's some contact and an offensive foul this time. Teresa Faustino called for the charge. And yeah, we'll see right here as, as uh, Keanu Rembert, nice, nice job of sliding over and taking the three. Taking the charge, he was outside the line. Well, we've got a good one at Diddle tonight. Right now it's Charlotte ahead by one. Well, it's a red-hot Charlotte through the opening, nearly opening six minutes of this game. They are five for their last five, and overall five for six to open up in this first quarter. It's been a scintillating start for Charlotte so far, John. Yeah, they're shooting eye balls out. I mean, in fairness, they're, they're mainly layups, uh, but they are shooting 83% from the field. Jada McMillan, point guard for uh, Charlotte, has played super so far. Six points, two assists. Three assists on those five field goals as McMillan goes to work. Kicks it out here to Tamia Davis, who has checked in number three. And now Alicia Wade off the bench as well. Her first shot attempt is no good. The rebound for WKU from Karis Allen. As both teams made some switches out of that timeout. Hope Savori, she lines one up. That's way off. She goes to the floor. No foul. Long rebound tracked down by Foster. And then the referees have blown the whistle. Well, the ball did hit the rim. I think that's the discussion on the shot clock. Uh, should, it, should it be a reset? It looked like to me it did hit the rim. As you can see, Gre Coach Greg Collins for WKU with yeah. the jacket tonight. That's correct. He's gone jacket. The whole staff has gone uh, jacket. They have pretty much have been uh, more of the uh, sweats this year. He's gone uh, jacket. Coach Collins does a great job, fifth year here. And he's made the three-point shot a key part of this WKU attack. Yep. Two of the top five all-time three-point shooting teams in WKU history are under him. Here's a look at the play in question right now. Yeah, it looked like to me he hit the front of the rim right there. It changed directions. I think so, too. Yeah, in the last game for Western Kentucky in, in the loss to middle, they set a, a, a record for amount of threes made with 16. Certainly did. They had tied the previous record of 14 four times over the last two seasons. As there is Kara Consuegra, the all-time wins leader at Charlotte. 208 wins heading into tonight's action. Reigning Conference USA Coach of the Year. She's a coach who likes to push the pace. Yeah, good player when she played at Iowa, too. Over 1,000 points and 500 assists and was actually drafted in the WNBA. Shot clock now under 10 after it uh, did not reset. 
Here's Savori kicking into the corner as the buzzer sounds and it's through the net. Faustino drains the three from the corner. That was a deep three. Drew, drew some rain too. Had to, had to really arch that to get it over the defender. Second three of the day for WKU as McMillan once again weaves her way to the rim and banks it in. Yeah, she is getting anything, any shot she wants right now for herself or for others. In control of herself and the game so far. Here's Maya Meredith. Driving into contact from the left side, and that's a defensive foul. Two players were in there for Charlotte, Tamia Davis and J.C. Busick. That's where Maya Meredith has really improved as a year has gone on. She tore her ACL last year right around this time. As you can see her taking it to the basket. Uh, it, it's taken her a while to get her legs back in, in, into shape and getting some of that lift, and now she's playing much more freely and more confident. Kind of like she was before. That, that's one of the reasons why she was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year last year. Foul goes against Busick of Charlotte. Meredith, a 65% free throw shooter, as the first spins out for her. Second one does as well. Rebound pulled in by Kiana Rimbert. Niners are running. Might have been deflected from behind, an offensive rebound and a putback is no good, but a foul called against WKU. Alicia Wade with that offensive board and she was fouled. Yeah, that was a defensive lapse that time for Western Kentucky. Nobody got back that time off the missed free throw. As you, as you see Davis taking it to the basket that time. Gotta be frustrating for Coach Collins to see his team beat on a fast break after missing a free throw at the other end. Not an ideal situation. No, that was to give uh, up. that was miscommunication at that time. It's an automatic point guard has to be back on that one. So here's Wade at the free throw line, the sophomore from York, South Carolina. She is playing well right now. She's four out of her last seven from three. She was two out of three in her in her last game against North Texas. Indeed she was, had six points on those two three-point field goals. And her free throws here have put Charlotte back in front by a pair. Here's Savori for WKU, kicks it out to Foster, a three. No good, battle for the rebound, another whistle. As McMillan had pulled it in for Charlotte, and it's going to be a foul against Faustino of WKU. I think they're going to give it actually on they McMillan. Are. Yeah, they're going to give McMillan on the push about that time on the rebound. Beg your pardon. I thought it was 1-4 from the referee. It was 1-5. So McMillan called for the foul, and Faustino heads to the line. WKU 4 for 8. Make it 4 for 9. Stripe not so charitable so far. Uh, shoots 70% for the year, but... Uh, Cold so far tonight, 4 and for 10. Another one bounces off the rim. Here comes Charlotte running once again, pushing the pace. And Lawrence with the adjustment in midair, a fine finish for Deza Lawrence. It's her first basket of the game, leading score. Charlotte seven for their last nine. A good drive and a good finish for Hope Savori there. I call Hope Savori the microwave. When she comes in, she can really score. She, 16 points or more in four of her last six games. Last time she had eight, it was two for three from downtown and the loss to Middle Tennessee State. Inside the final two minutes of the opening quarter of tonight's game, Tracy Houston posting up for Charlotte. Some WKU players wanted to travel. Instead, they're going to get a foul. It's going to be on Hope Savari. A lot of fouls this quarter. Has it's, been. Yeah, more fouls than, than the normal. You see Hope uh, slash right. Had a little bit too much of the arm that time. So here's Tracy Houston, the junior from Roanoke, Virginia, transferred in from Pitt. She had a career high her last game. 11 points, 5 rebounds against North, North Texas. Appearing in her 19th game of the season, has yet to make a start. Shooting 58% from the free throw line, but that'll tick up a couple of spots after she knocks down both there. Allen, not on the same page as Savori. Savori still gets the three away and she puts it in. That's what Savori does. Player that plays with supreme confidence. She had 17 the last time these two teams played. She was four out of eight in that game from three. The junior from Mercy Academy in Louisville. 
Flip up is no good there from Davis. Offensive putback is good from Houston. Yeah, right now Charlotte is really hurting Western Kentucky on the inside. Faustino drives in and pushes it up and in off the glass. I know Teresa Faustino is very, very excited tonight. I think her parents from Portugal are in to watch her. From Barrero, Portugal. By way of Oregon State. Here's Davis for three. Allen the rebound. Chance for WKU to take the lead inside the final minutes. Foster hesitates, drives, finishes. Yeah, it's a defensive mistake that time by Charlotte. They, they closed out on the wrong side. They forced Foster left, and she's left-handed. She said, thank you very much. Foster leading the way right now for WKU with six. McMillan, cross-court pass. Davis drives baseline, an open jump shot, missed everything. Shot clock off. Yeah, that's what Western Kentucky wants to do with Davis. Davis is a pure three-point shooter. Uh, they, they, that time they drove her off the line. Faustino. Here's Foster. Can't hit. Allen flips it up. That would have been good. But it's off the backboard. And that's the end of the first quarter. And it's Western Kentucky. After trailing for much of the first period, they've got a one-point lead, courtesy of four makes in their last five attempts. It's WKU by one. We've got a terrific game on our hands right now at EA Dental Arena. It's WKU by one. Charlotte has been buoyed by their veteran leader, the fifth-year point guard, Jada McMillan. Eight points on three of three shooting for her in ten minutes, John. And for WKU, Foster leading the way. She's got six on three of seven shooting. They've been the two big players so far. Yeah, both, both players playing well. Uh, Foster has been very, very active in and around the basket. And, of course, McMillan does a great job of running the point, getting to the lane, scoring or addition. Here she is, Jada McMillan, to get the second quarter underway. They get it to McGraw underneath. She pumps once and then goes up and puts it in. Yes, yeah, she is a, a, a tough matchup for Western Kentucky with her, her size, especially if she catches it within two feet of the basket. Maya McGraw listed at 6'2", the sophomore from Gainesville, Florida. Here's Allen from the free throw line. Another one of the three really, really good freshmen on the team for Western Kentucky. Very good athlete, and you can tell right there she's got a good shooting form. He was one for one last time out of the weekend at Middle Tennessee State. That was a three-pointer. That's her first basket of the day here against Charlotte. Now she's got the defensive duty against Allen, who kicks it out to Lawrence. That's a three. Daisy Lawrence knocks it down. Yeah, shoots 33% from, from the three, leading score. That, pa that three was off another assist from McMillan. First three-pointer of the day for the 49ers. They're one for three overall. I would like, if I was playing basketball, I would not mind McMillan being my point guard. Allen short on that three-pointer on a good pass from Faustino. And a whistle and a foul against Charlotte will keep it on this end with WKU. Oh, that's a big foul. That's the second on McMillan now. A lot of coaches automatically take you out with two. I wasn't one of those. I, I kind of wanted my best players on the floor. I think she's going to leave her out on the floor, and I think you can do that if you trust your guard. And McMillan, like you said, has played over 135 games, so she should be able to play without fouling. And, of course, her head coach, as you mentioned, John, was a point guard herself in her playing days. Absolutely. So if anybody understands, it's her coach right now for McMillan. But that's a point of emphasis, I would imagine, for WKU. Maybe try and attack 15 if you can and get one of the leaders for Charlotte in foul trouble. Here's Faustino. Gets it to Allen. Loose ball on the floor. Picked up by Charlotte with Busick. Here they come on the run. Lawrence picks up her dribble. Now Busick lining one up. Too strong. And a loose ball rebound collected by Otis Betancourt for WKU. There's a drive and a foul. Maya Meredith forcing the issue and getting the contact. Yeah, it's going to be on McGraw. McGraw if McGraw had just stood there and gone straight up, that would have been a, probably been a no call. But you can tell she turned her body. And anytime you turn your body, 
whether or not you're straight up or not, you're generally going to get the foul. You want them just to stay straight, straight up rather than turn your body. That's kind of what the coach is uh, telling her right now. Meredith at the line for the second time tonight. She missed her first two attempts. Wow. And she stays cold, as does the entire WKU team. They're 4 4 11. That is, uh, when you're down two, that's, uh, that's a startling uh, stat. Four out of 12. Too strong on the second. And Meredith is 0 for 4 from She's the free throw line. You're talking about a tremendous shooter as well. Josie Gilvin has checked into the game. She's got the defensive duty right now against McMillan as the double team came over for Meredith. And a turnover. Faustino comes away with the interception. Here she is, two on two. She flips it up and in, plus the foul. Teresa Faustino. Yeah, I think she hit her head on the floor that time. But Faustino is a great finisher right here, and I think we're going to see the replay. Here, right here is the steal. That was the deflection that time by Maya Meredith, and here's Faustino going to the basket, draws a foul on Lawrence, and you can see her head hit the uh, the uh, protector right there underneath the goal. I think she's okay. It is. And she's got a round of applause from the crowd here as she has risen to her feet. She'll head to the free throw line. She too, 0 for 2 after one trip there. Referees are going to make sure that she's okay right here. You know, with the proliferation of head injuries and things like that, they're going to be very careful. And she misses the free throw. Can't complete the three-point play. Four of 13. That's incredible. McMillan had it knocked out of her hands from behind, but illegally so. And it's a foul against WKU here. It's going to be on Josie Gilvin, freshman from Sacred Heart, who is known to be a tremendous defender. Averaging nearly a steal and a half per game for a WKU team that averages 12 steals per game. That's tops in Conference USA. Eighth best in the country as well. Yeah. They did take Teresa Faustino out. I think they're going to take her to the locker room, just take a look at her. Yeah, she has walked back behind the bench now toward the locker room. Bettencourt also takes a seat for WKU. There's another foul as McMillan was driving in. I think that is the right call. I don't think the home crowd likes it, but it looked like to me that is the correct call right here as McMillan changed directions and gets into the lane. That is a slap down by Joseph Gilvin. Lexi Mead there, number three. I, think they may gave it to, I don't know if they gave it to Gilvin or me, but both of them were honored. You know, from a player's perspective, when you slap down, if the ball goes straight down, that means you've got all ball. If it doesn't go straight down, that probably means you've got some arm or a hand. Foul was against Mead. And McMillan at the line here. And unlike WKU, Charlotte is perfect from the free throw line so far. Eight for eight. McMillan puts herself in double figures with ten. The first player to do so tonight. And there is a loose ball turnover from Meredith. Just dribbled into trouble and lost her dribble. Now McMillan looks back to her coach, Consuegra, for the play call. Seven seconds on the shot clock, and WKU forces another turnover. A loose pass there by Rimbert. Here's Allen for three. Fight for the rebound. Foster comes away with it. Might have thought about going up to score. Now she will back in, goes to the left hand, and draws a foul. Hey, what? There was a there was some physical play on that rebound. I was I was watching. Uh, on the outside, it looked like Mead was going out with another player their time, and there's Jalen Foster again. She has uh, been quite active uh, tonight. Went right at Tracy Houston for Charlotte defensively, and so Foster goes to the free throw line. Her first trip there. We've had a number of free throws tonight, 21 between the two teams. I think they are going to look at that little scrum that that took place, to be honest with you. It was... Uh, it was Lexi Mead, and I think it was Alicia Wade that was kind of tied up right around the three-point line on the rebound. I believe that's what they're going to be looking at. 
I don't think it was anything intentional. I think it was both both players trying to block out each other, but they both ended up on the ground. Referees do head over to check on the monitors. The hot shooting for Charlotte continues so far. They've got they're hitting a 59% clip so far. 10 for 17. So we will step aside and take a timeout as the referees look at that last play. Charlotte leads by two on the road, looking for a second ever win in Bowling Green. So the question here that they were reviewing will be on the right-hand part of your screen when we show you the replay in a moment. Charlotte leads by two. The question is whether Alicia Wade, a sophomore guard for Charlotte, committed a foul in that tangle up there, which you saw on the right-hand side of your screen as she and Meade went to the ground. And, John, you understand what the call is here. Yes, yeah, a double intentional foul uh, on Lexi Meade and Wade for uh, for Charlotte. They will cancel each other out. Uh, be no shooting for that. But uh, but Jalen Foster will go to the line for the, for, the free th for the two free throws on her foul against her. So we've gotten the memo. Now the coaches are getting the memo. Yeah, I think it's the right – I mean, if it's de it's so I, I do think that's the right call. You can almost argue that Lexi was the one that made kind of took it. To be honest with you, she's the one that ended up on the ground. But I think it's overall probably the right call. Let's take let's take a look again. It, you see the interaction. You see the collision between. Yeah, Wade. Yeah, I mean, is the Meade. shove in the, I mean, it's from the Western Kentucky perspective, it's, you know, if you're Lexi Meade, you're going, I'm kind of the one taking it in the chest. Uh, I don't know what happened beforehand, but that was a very aggressive, say the least, block out, if you call that a block out. So again, the double foul will cancel each other out, but Foster will go to the free throw line here for WKU. Kara Consuegra on the top of your screen for Charlotte, having a little bit of an extended conversation with the referee, and she now turns her attention to her team. So after that's been settled, back to the free throw line struggles for WKU. And Foster puts at least a brief end to them. And this, uh, this could be the, the last two times these two teams play. I mean, to be honest with you, they, they could play in a conference tournament. I don't know about next year's schedule, but Charlotte is leaving the conference to go to the American after this. It's an excellent point. Foul here on WKU as Wade drove in, nearly got the roll with the right hand. You see her going to the basket right there, and it's going to be the, the foul that time on Maya Meredith. This has been a... Uh, a more free throws and fouls that I can remember in the first half. We still have 6.32 to go in the second quarter. Charlotte has not hit a field goal in nearly three minutes. They've been scoring at the free throw line. That's their ninth made free throw out of nine attempts. Really but the it's difference in the game right now is Charlotte is nine for nine from the free throw line and Western Kentucky's four for 13. 10 for 10 now after Wade puts in the pair. But it's a good point you made, John, about this being maybe the last team, the last time these two sides could meet. Yeah, it's a series that Western Kentucky, uh, WKU, I should say, leads 22 to 8 all time. 22 to 8 all time, 15 and 1 here, though Charlotte has won the last three. Here's Meade. They swing it around to Foster on the right side. Now Meade from the left. She puts it up. No good. Meredith trying to corral the rebound, can't do it. Pretty even rebounding margin as well right now. WKU with a one rebound actually now has pulled even at 13 apiece. So really the biggest difference to your point, John, is the free throw line right now. Here's McMillan driving it in, flipping it up against Gilvin. Gilvin might have gotten a touch. It'll stay with Charlotte as they pull down the rebound. Shot clock under 15 as Wade directs traffic. Gets a screen from Houston. Wade to the rim. Wild shot, put back, no. And rebound here to WKU. Oh 
Mead, another foul call, this time against Wade of Charlotte as she tried to get around that screen. That will be Wade's second. That's good sportsmanship, too, is Wade and Lexi Mead that got the double intention on that time that was fouled on Wade, and she reached down and helped her up. You see right here the, the foul. That's a good call that time. And the sportsmanship right there, both two Charlotte players. WKU is in the bonus. And really, you know, when, when the when the women's game went to the four quarters rather than two halves like the men, and, and it's five fouls each quarter, and it's resets after each quarter. You know, the men's game, it's seven fouls for the whole half, and, and, and really that actually kind of reduced the amount of time spent on the free throw line because it resets each time. Because you're, you're getting more fouls each half. That's correct. But not tonight, though. It's, it's kind of unusual the amount of, of free throws and that's been taken, and it's extremely unusual for a, a team that shoots 70% to be four out of 14 at the line at home, too. You heard a murmur in the crowd after that first miss by Mead that time. It becomes psychological after a while. And the fans feeling the psychological effects as well. We've not had a field goal for Charlotte in nearly four minutes. No field goals for WKU in two and a half. It's been a march back and forth between the two free throw lines for the last little period. McMillan going to work again against Gilvin. Oh, what a step through and a finish there for Rimbert. Yeah, that was a nice, nice jump stop and step through. 30 second timeout. And another shot that, that Charlotte has made within three feet from the lane. As you can see right here, this, this, this move right here. That's an excellent jump stop and then finish right there in Western Kentucky late on the rotation. And the pump fake that got it started. You'll right. see it here. Well, the referee was just in the way of that, but a pump fake froze the defender, got by her, and then jumped right through. Well, with the development of uh, so many players now go to that uh, the, the Euro step, you don't see as, as much as you used to the pure jump stop. That was a jump stop where you land on both feet and go up. Aside from the free throws, which we've talked a lot about, what's standing out to you right now? It's been a very even game aside from that, really. Well, Charlotte's ability to get to the basket. You know, right? we, we talked before the game, one of the keys was, was to be able to guard the perimeter. Well, the, so far, Jada McMillan in particular has got the ball inside as much as, as any time she's wanted. And, and consequently, one of the reasons why Charlotte is shooting so well is they're shooting close two-foot shots. Inside the final five minutes of the first half, out of the timeout. Another three-pointer here for Pitts. And she puts it in. Uh, one thing Western Kentucky will not do is they're not going to stop shooting threes. Third most attempts in the country at 29. They've already taken 14. They are 4 of 14 from beyond the arc. And that's a one-point game. Backdoor cut looking for McMillan. Good hands defensively for WKU. Meade comes out with it. She drops it off to Foster for three. No, it rims out. Yeah, that's a good look for her, too. Rebounded by Busick, who dribbles herself into a little bit of trouble, but was able to get the ball away. Three subs in waiting for WKU, one for Charlotte at the next dead ball. Gilvin with active hands. Remains with the Niners, however, with McMillan, the player they want to have with the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. Fans want to walk. It was a wild shot in the end anyway, and it goes out of bounds. And I think Charlotte wanted, uh, wanted to foul. <laughs> After a while, it's it, you can see right here trying to get to the rim, McMillan going in there. It's probably the right call. Pretty good defense that time by Pitts. I can understand why Charlotte wants that call. Here's Faustino giving way to Foster, who made a drive to the rim. But it's a turnover from WKU as Lawrence, who just checked in, picks up the steal. And here she is on the ball, Daisy Lawrence. The redshirt sophomore. She gets into the paint, hands it off to Houston. It was a great pass, and it leads to an easy finish once again. To your point, John, that you've been making tonight, another two-foot easy bunny basket for Charlotte. Yeah, another assist that time about Lawrence, and that's just too easy. 
Here's a three-pointer from Maya Meredith that bounces off the rim. And on the rebound, another loose ball foul will go against Charlotte. Another good job that time by Jalen Foster. She's been extremely active on the boards. That should be her fourth rebound, I believe, all offensive rebounds. The problem with this game right now, I mean, it's 35-32, it's so it's close and it's obviously competitive. It's kind of hard to get into a, any rhythm with the amount of fouls and free throw shooting. It's kind of like, I know you do baseball. It's kind of like a baseball game with a lot of walks. Yes, kind of hard is. to get into to, to, to a lot of rhythm. It's a good comparison. 27 combined free throws to this point in the first half. This is a big game, too, for both teams, and particularly Western Kentucky is in a solid second place right now behind Middle Tennessee. Conference tournament starts in three weeks. Both teams have six games left, I believe. And uh, I think it's really important for Western Kentucky to stay opposite of Middle. If you're going to face Middle, you'd like to face them in the finals rather than in semifinals. Certainly would. like to lock down that second seed for yourself. So you don't have to face off with the Blue Raiders once again after they dropped 94 on your head the last time That's out. That's correct. Looked like maybe a travel there by Rimbert. It wasn't called. Her shot was no good. Allen in the corner, and now Faustino. Foster battling away with Lawrence down low. Instead, it goes to the corner. Here's Macy Blevins for WKU. Lost her dribble, picks it up. Gets rid of the ball. Hayes kicks to Allen. Foster over the back. That's a good block at that time by J.C. Busick. And both teams, I believe that'll be the fifth team foul against Western Kentucky WKU. And yeah. so we'll march to the other end of the floor and have some free throws. See that box out. That was outstanding box out. And it leads to the long walk to the other end for a free throw. Music's a good free throw shooter, 83%. Uh, First game against Western Kentucky three weeks ago, she had 13 points, eight rebounds. She drills the first. J.C. Busick, the junior from Kernersville, North Carolina, a 6'1 guard. They have a lot of players from North Carolina, obviously, Charlotte, but they have three from Raleigh. Charlotte in a great basketball state. It really is. Don't really have to travel far to do your recruiting, I would imagine. Closing in on the final two minutes. And a drive and a finish there for Hayes from WKU. Looks like someone got lost defensively yeah, for Charlotte there. That was a nice little handoff that time. Handoff screen that time by Foster. It freed up Hayes. Lawrence defended by Allen. They're giving her the left hand. She'll now drive to the block, falls to the ground, and lost the ball. A chance to break for WKU. A bounce pass, and she can't finish. Macy Blevins on the end had the look at the rim, but couldn't get up. Yeah, that was the right look. Yeah, the ball was a little low. Right here is the uh, here comes the pass right here by Faustino. The ball maybe just a tad bit behind that, but it's very catchable at times. It's a very creative pass very as well creative. with the That's right great. hand. Yeah. Teresa Faustino has a she has a flair to her game. She she does not look athletic, but she's as we like to say sneaky athletic. One of the better defenders on the team. She got a hand on that ball a moment ago. Charlotte goes down low to Houston. Another whistle and a foul. Yeah, when Charlotte gets the ball that deep, they are just very very hard to handle. They have such a size advantage on Western Kentucky. And here's a good entry pass right there, and it's just too deep on the block. Western Kentucky it wants to double it, but you can't double it when they catch it with a foot in the paint. You can double the post outside the paint, but not inside the paint. Between Houston and McGraw, both the main post players for Charlotte stand 6-2 as Houston misses the first attempt here. Puts in the second. First miss of the night from the free throw line for Charlotte just a moment ago from Houston. The Niners with the lead. WKU goes underneath to Allen. She spins to the left hand. 
And it is a walk, a travel. Yeah, switch pivot foot set that time. Acacia Hayes, it was a good idea to go to the left, but did pick up her feet, it looked like. Inside the final minute of the second quarter, working our way to halftime in what has been a very competitive, evenly played first half. Albeit there have been a number of fouls and a ton of free throws. Here's Busick. Picks up her dribble, kicks it out to McMillan, into the corner. Here's Davis for three. Busick, an offensive rebound. And an errant pass from Busick trying to find Davis. It's caught by Greg Collins on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah good hands that time by Coach Collins. And that sets it up right now. Western Kentucky can go for the last shot. About one second difference. You'd like to get a shot right around the five-second mark in case you miss it. That gives you an opportunity to rebound. Instead, they go quick with Foster, and she puts it in. I don't know that if that was three. A, yeah, I don't know if that was the plan, but you'll take it. It's one of those no, no, no. Okay, good shot. WKU's fifth three of the first half. Might they find a steal here? They do. Foster all alone. Here she goes for the layup. And it's a five-point run for Jalen Foster to end the first half. And she single-handedly has given WKU the lead. What a way to end a, what a, way to end a half right there. I was, I was saying hold the ball and get the last shot, and maybe you could tie it. Ended up scoring five straight in the last 15 seconds. It's been a lot of fun so far at Diddle. WKU ahead by two on a very even game in a game that both teams need in Conference USA. Welcome back. We're set to begin the second half here at EA Diddle Arena. Charlotte against WKU. And in similar fashion, the first quarter and the second quarter ended with WKU coming from behind to take a lead in the late stages. So that's how we have the Hilltoppers in front at the break. We talked about the keys to the game to begin the broadcast, John. So let me turn to you once again and get some keys maybe to the second half. What do you think these two teams are going to need to do to come out with a win? What do you think the message was from the two coaches at halftime? I don't think it changes that much because Western. You know, we, we talked about Western Kentucky needs to guard the perimeter. Well, even though Charlotte is scoring at the rim, it's the perimeter that's breaking them down for the assist. You know? And uh, that's, that's a, a big, big problem for Western Kentucky. Uh, for Charlotte, uh, obviously Char Charlotte has to be aware. You know, they've got 10 turnovers, and they have to be aware of these live turnovers that Western Kentucky is causing. It's 12-3 it's in terms of scoring all turnovers. So back underway in the second half for WKU. It's Pitts, Mead, Meredith, Hayes, and Foster. That is a uh, coach's nightmare to start off the half that way with the turnover, and Charlotte gave it right back to him. Charlotte did gift it right back to them through Busick. She's joined by McMillan, Lawrence Davis, and McGraw to get things started here in the second half. They trade turnovers on the first possession. Meade looking to get it in, and it's tapped over by Hayes now to Pitts. Hayes working around Lawrence. A bounce pass into Foster. She'll kick it out to Meredith. Lining a three up, and that's short. Ball gets to the ground, and it's put back up and in by Pitts for Charlotte. That's a frustration for their coach, Kara Consuegra, to see the ball hit the ground. But for WKU, a heads-up play there by Pitts to pounce on the loose ball and put it back up and in. Yeah, that was a good hustle that time by Pitts. Foster was right around it as well. Lawrence pulls up from the free throw line. Bounces off McGraw, the offensive board, and she puts it back up and in off the glass. There's not a, a lot of answers to guard McGraw when she gets to the debt level. From the corner, the three-pointer from Pitts is too strong. She'll track down the loose ball rebound, though. Hands it off to Foster, no foul. Foster, an offensive board. Now Pitts from the free throw line, and that bounces in. There was a lot of contact. Uh, but I think after a while, I think sometimes officials get tired of calling fouls, to be honest with you. There's a lot of contact on that one. Pitts now with nine points, second only to Foster for WKU. Yeah, another turnover that time by Charlotte. That, trying, to, it, trying to make that post feed that time to McGraw, and uh, she was open, but the post feed was its hard to make that post feed when you're about 30 feet from the basket, too much air under it. 
Here's Lexi Mead. Three points for her and an assist in the first half. Foster posting up, and she gets the step through on Lawrence. No foul called as Lawrence turned to the referee to plead her case. But Foster continues to have the hot hand for the Hilltoppers. That's going to be an illegal screen on Rimper. Indeed it was, and Foster with a clap of her hands to celebrate. WKU on a little run here to open the third quarter, John. Yeah, that's exactly, I mean, Western Kentucky right now is on a, uh, was that a 9-0 a, a run, is that right? 46-40, scored the last five of the first half, plus the first four here, I believe. That's a good point. Three turnovers in the last minute for Charlotte. A long three-pointer is good for Acacia Hayes. Acacia Hayes is in foul trouble in the first half. She's a really good three-point shooter. 34%. And Kara Consuegra wants a timeout. She is about fed up with her team. Yes, yeah, she's not mad at the officials. She is not happy with the intensity to start the second half. You see there, the clipboard hit the deck for Consuegra. You can understand the frustration as she has seen this game get a little bit out of their fingers, out of their hands here. It's WKU by nine as we step aside for a timeout. The toppers on a 7-0 run. Well, whatever the halftime speech was from Greg Collins, it seems to have worked to perfection. WKU opening the third quarter on a 7-0 run over about 58 seconds. They're on a 7-0 run, I should say. They've hit each of their last three shots. We get a look at them here, John. Yeah, Leah Pitts, she's got four this, this uh, quarter. Uh, and Jalen Foster, the other one. Back to live action here. Lawrence driving to the rim to try and end the run, and she does with an acrobatic finish off the glass. Daisa Lawrence, and she's a bit hobbling as she gets back up to run back on defense. And an offensive foul against WKU. Well, I think that may have been the right call. I, I think what Coach Collins is wondering, it came across from the opposite official, but it looked like it was an offensive foul. See, Lawrence just a moment ago looked like she's walking a little bit gingerly on her left leg from my view. She's got the interior pass here. It's picked off by Foster. Loose ball picked up by Pitts after Foster had the deflection. Here comes Mead, stops in the lane, steps through with the right hand. It's short, Busick the rebound. But a steal from Mead. Toppers take back over. Pitts back to Mead. Oh, but she can't finish. It was pretty play. Everything but the finish, though Foster finishes this time. Western Kentucky like just gnats flying around right here. You've got to be extremely strong with the ball. Five turnovers just this quarter so far by Charlotte. WKU with 23 points off of Charlotte turnovers as compared to just three points off of turnovers for the Niners on the other side. Ball will stay with Charlotte here after the missed shots. I mean, just this game shows you why Western Kentucky is eighth in the country in steals. Credited with eight steals to this point. WKU. They've got a nine-point lead. They forced five turnovers in the last two and a half minutes in the second half. Lawrence for three. Off the back rim, Pitts the rebound. Can they continue this hot stretch to start the second half? Meade drives in and draws a foul. Be on J.C. Music that time. Lexi Meade has got some kind of hidden uh, stats. I mean, the stats don't show a lot, but that, I'll tell you what, she causes a lot of issues out on the court. Hands on the ball all the time. The way she affects the pace of the yeah, game defensively like her, as well. Yeah, I like her toughness to her. I mean, as point guard, she's, she's got some toughness to her. Looks like Collins having a little bit of a conversation with Meta Christensen, the one of the three officials tonight. The only drawback for Western Kentucky is the free throw line, seven of twenty, and it's and it's not that's something that you really can't say much to a, to a to a team. It's not like you can go in the locker room and yell at them about missing free throws. Nobody wants to miss the free throws. 
As you pointed out, John, 70% on the season as a team at WKU. And you need one for two there. And you kind of don't want to talk about it. That's, that's a subject that most coaches, at least me, you don't really want to talk a lot to your team about making free throws. It's almost like they got the yips at the line that's a little correct. bit. That's correct. Uh, here's a steal by Foster as the Hilltoppers have opened up a 10-point lead, but she can't connect with Meredith on the cut to the basket on the fast break. Jalen Foster having an outstanding game. Another steal for Foster, another turnover for Charlotte. Foster with 17 to lead all scorers, also has two steals defensively. Largest lead of the game, McGraw. Can she finish? She can, and she draws the foul, the hoop, and the harm for Maya McGraw. She heads to the free throw line. Yeah, that's been all or nothing right there. The feed to the block to McGraw has either worked with a basket or it's been a turnover. That time, it's going to be a basket and a potential and one for McGraw. And again, WKU, whether it's been in the zone or the man-to-man, -man, they seem to want to front McGraw, right. which has if hurt them a few times when they are able to get the ball over that outstretched hand of the defender. Yeah, if you're going to front, what you have to do if you're going to front is you got to pressure the ball. Where it's not, a, it's, it's like pressuring a quarterback where they can't see the receiver. You want to put great pressure on the ball where it makes that pass hard to get to. The McGraw does not complete the three-point play, so we come to the other end. Here's Meade. She's open, and she missed everything. Might have just nicked the rim on the right side, yeah. but it's way off in the end. Wide right, and she's a good three-point shooter, too. I mean, she's shooting, it says 31% this year. She shot 36% last year, and that's an open three. And she takes a seat after that miss. Faustino comes back in. Lawrence stops and pops, can't hit. That's her game, too. A little pull-up jumper, just missed it. Here's Faustino, fresh off the bench. Foster thought about a three. Jab step against McGraw. She's got the quickness advantage, but McGraw with the height advantage, and she stuffs it. McMillan, a no-look pass to McGraw. She can't finish inside. And a loose ball taken in by Foster. It costs two points and an assist. I think McGraw just has to come out, a little winded. Hayes on the drive, goes with the right hand, can't get the finish off the glass. A number of close-in shots have been missed by both teams so far tonight. Charlotte looks a little bit shell-shocked right now. And winded as well as the triple team comes down on McGraw on a steal for WKU. Faustino switches over to the left hand. No good. And then a foul against Maya Meredith as she swiped at McMillan from behind at midcourt. So that'll take us to a timeout. Western Kentucky, WKU off to a terrific start in the third quarter. And Charlotte needs a breather. They trail WKU by eight with 3.52 to play in the third. WKU is led by as many as 10 in this third quarter, in large part thanks to their defense. The Hilltoppers have forced eight turnovers since halftime. They've scored 11 points on those turnovers, and they forced 18 for the game, John. Yeah, it's two more than Charlotte's average, 18. That's exactly what, that's the strength of Western Kentucky. It's one of the reasons why they're 10 and 4 in the conference and won 9 out of 11 defensively. Uh, they cause all kinds of havoc defensively. WKU forcing nearly 21 turnovers on average per game. That's tops in the league. McMillan gets to the rim and Man. puts it in. That was a, a tough drive and finish. I love the jump stop that time. Jump stop and kind of fade into the left. That's a nice, nice play by McMillan. And when Charlotte needed a basket, they went to their fifth year leader. 4-1 out of the timeout. Faustino open underneath, and she can't connect on the pass to Josie Gilvin. It's a turnover by WKU. Yeah, from the Western Kentucky point of view right now, it, you're, you're happy with the run and up six, but it just seems like to me that they've blown some chances to blow it open to about 16. Miss a couple turnovers by Western Kentucky and some missed layups as well. 
It was stood a run, now they need one of their own, Charlotte. Millen picks up her dribble, but puts it in from mid-range. Playing like a fifth-year player that started for four years. Didn't look like she wanted the shot initially and then found herself open and said, why not? Put it up and put it in. A three-pointer from Blevins is way off on the back side of the rim. A little full-court trap from WKU. McMillan able to get rid of the ball. But they've got to get over the timeline here. Ten and second. they didn't do it. Ten-second violation against Charlotte. The trap did its job for the Hilltoppers. It is a rarity that you get a ten-second call anyway. It's, it's virtually never see it off a missed shot. That was, a, that was a missed shot and rebound by Charlotte, and uh, most teams don't press off missed shots, and Western Kentucky jumped into a little trap and uh, caused that turnover. Greg Collins stomping the floor as he tries to call out the play. Gilvin picked up her dribble, flips it inside, and the bank shot is good from Bettencourt. That's a good pass by, by, by Gilvin to Bettencourt. Note of Bettencourt with good position inside as well. Here's Lawrence for Charlotte to the left hand. And a late whistle, but it does come, and it's a foul against WKU on the shot. Yeah, it was a straight line drive. One of the things you don't want to do as a, as a defensive player is give up a straight line drive, and that was a straight line drive, and the help that time by Bettencourt was just too late. And that puts Lawrence back in the line. Lawrence is having a big, big year. She's a redshirt sophomore. Uh, only averaged three points a game last year. Only played about nine minutes a game last year. And she's up now. She's playing 33 minutes a game and uh, and averaging 15.5 a game. That's a, that's a monster improvement. This is a Charlotte team that would have hoped to have had the services of Michaela Boykin. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why her minutes are up so much, too. Boykin would have been one of the better players coming back this year. She averaged last year. She was second, and Boykin was second team all-conference last year. And unfortunately, tore ACL uh, after the during the fifth game of the year. Yeah, foul there against Wade. Boykin, the Duke transfer, played 30 games last season for Charlotte. Averaged 15 and a half points per game this season over five games. But as you mentioned, John tore her ACL for the fifth time. That's ah, just tough on yep. December 1st. And so she called it a career. Here's Lawrence out of sorts, gives the ball away. And on the other end, Savori goes to the rim and draws the foul on McMillan. And that, I believe, is the third against McMillan. Right there is the play. It's another jump stop. Hope decided, still going in for the layup, I think she feared McMillan was going to go for the block, decided to jump stop and then ball fake. So Hope Savori, who has five points on two of three shooting tonight, goes to the free throw line for the first time. 72% free throw shooter on this season, but she misses. And Western Kentucky continues she was the to be cold. Western Kentucky has the back-to-back Freshman of the year. She was the uh, co freshman of the year her freshman year, and of course, last year was Maya Meredith. 0 for 2 that trip. Unbelievable. There is a lid on the rim from the free throw line. Uh, Just eight made free throws on 23 attempts for WKU. Great pass. And a great shot on, on the finish from Tamia Davis for three. Tamia Davis is uh, eight of her last 17 threes going into the night. She had four out of eight. Saturday, so she is. Uh, she's got a quick trigger as well. Savori puts it up and drains it. Savori from downtown. Yeah, she is uh, like a microwave. Miss no free throws. It's not going to hurt her confidence. She's got she's a very confident player. Has no fear. Three pointers on either end to open up the play. In the last couple of minutes, WKU by four inside the final minute of the third quarter. A very eventful third quarter. Here's a corner three for Charlotte, and that's good. That's back to back threes for Davis. Yeah, she is a dangerous, dangerous shooter. Uh, watching that last game, I was really impressed again with North Texas, how quick she can get her shot off. Faustino pumps, drives, puts it up, and is fouled. It's going to be, I think it's going to be on Lawrence. But right now, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually. The way the game's gone, Charlotte's advantage to foul. <laughs> Although 
a few of the Niners are getting into a little bit of foul trouble as we work our way to the fourth quarter. Three players on the floor currently with three fouls apiece, Lawrence, McMillan, and Rimbert. Well, making, making free throws and missing free throws is contagious. It goes either way. Greg Collins is hoping it's contagious in the positive way for his team as Faustino hits the first but can't hit the second. I don't think Western Kentucky has hit two in a row yet. Can she hit the three? No, off the front rim after Blevins had chased down the rebound. Davis has had the hot hand, but it was a shooting hot hand, not a passing one as she over throws that pass looking for Lawrence, and that's into the Charlotte bench a turnover. That, those turnovers just drive you crazy. It's just uh, totally unforced. Western Kentucky should hold it for the obviously the last shot. 25 seconds left. Shot clock is off. After seeing their 10-point lead shrink to two, they'll try to add to that total heading into the fourth. They've led after the first and the second. Faustino gets a screen from Foster, kicks it to the corner. Gilvin for three, no. Rebounded by Wade for Charlotte. Time for the Niners if they move quickly with three seconds. Way up ahead, and the buzzer sounds before the shot was off from Davis. It was blocked anyway. And so that'll take us to the fourth quarter. WKU led by as many as 10, but their lead heading into the fourth is just two. Charlotte closing the quarter on a four for four shooting streak. Welcome back. Fourth quarter set to begin at EA Diddle Arena. Jeff Milby and John Butler hanging out with you on this Thursday night. It felt like at the start of the th third quarter that WKU was going to run away with it. They led by 10 at one point. But through a couple of three-pointers from Davis, notably, Charlotte was able to cut into that lead, and it is very much anybody's game in yeah, the fourth quarter here, John. I was going to say, it's 9-2 start the third quarter for Western Kentucky, and it ended up being a tie, 18-18. And uh, it really comes down to the free throw shooting. That's the, the difference in the game right now. Uh, Western Kentucky only up two, but when you're 9 of 25 from the free throw line, not only does that prevent you from obviously putting up close to 16 more points, but it also is a momentum killer. You can't set your defense up. You want to press where well, you need to make free throws where you can set up your press as well. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, intangibles, I guess you could say, that goes with missing free throws. Here's a steal from Lawrence for Charlotte. She drives in against Gilvin, steps through, flips it up and in, and drew the contact. She'll head to the free throw line for a third. If you want to know what a Euro step is, we got it on replay. You're going to see their Euro step that time and then finished by Lawrence. And uh, Charlotte now has an opportunity to take a one-point lead. Right here is the steal, and right here is the step, and that's the old Euro step that has been made popular really by the influence of the, a lot of the European players in the NBA kind of brought that to the game. Great composure as well as she completed the Euro step, lost the handle just for a moment, but was able to collect herself and flip it up and in with the right hand. We talked about WKU's shooting woes at the free throw line as Lawrence misses. Charlotte on the other side, they're 15 for 18 now from the free throw line. We'll talk about momentum not swinging because you miss a free throw. That three-point play is not converted. And instead of a Charlotte lead, we're tied at 58. Faustino as the shot clock moves under 10. Now Meredith on the left side. She'll force the issue into a crowd. Missed everything. It'll stay with WKU as McMillan had the final touch. Three seconds on the ticker. Yeah, that's where Maya Meredith that time took it. One dribble too much. A little pull up from about 10 feet, which she's more than capable. It would have probably been the preferred shot. Three players in red taking a seat as Meade and Allen are among the group to replace them. Now Charlotte is one of the few teams in the country that play 1-3-1 inbounds. Meade to inbound. She gets it into Hayes, who doesn't know how much time is on the shot clock. It didn't appear anyway, and the shot clock buzzer sounds. And Kara Consuegra, just to the right of your screen, was pumping both fists in the air, celebrating that defensive effort by her team. Well, I like the 1-3-1. One, one. I've seen a few teams do that, and it forced the long pass out, and that time Acacia Hayes was just not aware of the shot clock. Sounded like people on the bench were shouting, 
at her to get the shot up, and she did just too late. Here's Lawrence. Hesitates, steps into a mid-range shot and drains it. Well, she's starting to feel it now. It certainly is. Daisy Lawrence for Charlotte. She's got 13. Second only to McMillan for Charlotte in scoring. Here's the leader for WKU, Foster. And now Hayes, she'll line it up and put it in from deep. Four feet behind the line. Right, that was deep. That's her second three of the night. And that was a really important one to put Western Kentucky back in the lead. 13 lean changes so far. Lawrence had the ball knocked away for a moment. Gets it to Rimbert. Backdoor cut, McMillan. Well defended there by Hayes. McMillan thought about posting up the freshman. Instead, we'll pull her out with 10 seconds on the shot clock. A fifth year against a rookie. Here's Lawrence, who's had the hot hand. Pass inside to McGraw, but too hot for her to handle. Yeah, she was open a lot earlier than that. They just missed her that time. McGraw's been very, very effective right here. You can see the late pass that goes out of bounds. McGraw's been effective. She's got 10 points, but there's also, in fairness, they've turned the ball over about five times trying to feed the post to her. Certainly have. Offensive foul. It's going to be on Jalen Foster that time, trying to set a trying to set a screen that time for for Maya Meredith. It'll be Foster's second foul. Hayes with three among players on the floor for WKU that might be looking at a little foul trouble late. And Millen with the ball with three fouls of her own. Now Busick. McGraw posting up, wants the ball, fronted by Foster. Now she comes and sets the screen for McMillan. McMillan's drive. Her finish, though, bounces out, and Meredith comes away with the board. Yeah, she got to the spot she wanted to, just missed it. Now Lexi Mead, working around the screen, gives way to Hayes. She gets into the paint. No good, rebounded by Davis. Between the missed free throws and missed layups for Western Kentucky, that has been a huge factor tonight. That's a great shot fake that time by Hayes. Just shot the layup short. Here's Wade after a collision between her and her teammate Busick, and Wade was fouled on her way to the rim. Two oh, shots okay. coming. It's going to be goes against Hayes. Yeah, it's going to be on Hayes right there. But, Getting to the rim. It's not going to be on Jalen Foster. Jalen Foster got all ball, but yeah. it's going to be on Hayes. That's the correct call. And if you're Foster, you got to be a little bit frustrated because that's a great play to just yep. take the ball right away. Wade the line. Alicia Wade shoots 56% from the free throw line, has not taken a lot of free throws. Four points for her tonight. And that was her first miss. Four for five from the charity strike. Tied up again. Indeed it is with six and a half to go. WKU trying to bounce back from a tough loss at Middle Tennessee State when they were just outscored, plain old-fashioned outscored. And Charlotte trying to put a winning streak together after losing two of their last four. Here's Meredith. Rebounded by Allen, and she was fouled, I believe, on the floor. Yes, the shot yeah. wouldn't have counted. Yeah, Karis Allen is probably the most athletic player on Western Kentucky's team. And she, talking about some athleticism, she just went up and got that rebound. It'll be a foul on Busick, who was trying to block her out. You see right here, Allen just goes right up one-handed and getting that rebound. Allen with four rebounds. Foster open on the inbound play, can't finish. And another miss, gimme. Davis comes away with the loose ball. I beg your pardon, that's Wade came away with a loose ball. She gives it to Davis to get it across the timeline. Greg Collins wanted a walk. And Charlotte will settle things down with their veteran point guard, McMillan, here. She sets up shop, goes to work against Hayes. Can't get the floater. 
Pretty good defense that time by Hayes. All knotted at 61 with five and a half to go. Meade gets into the paint and scores. A deflection on the inbounds pass. Meade picks up the loose ball, tries to save it inbounds. But it's Charlotte possession. And Press nearly working to force another turnover there for the Hilltoppers. Charlotte struggling to get their offense set here. Rimbert goes to the rim and scores with the left hand that time. The 6'2 redshirt freshman with a drive and finish. I think both teams are looking for a timeout. Both teams are looking to get a little, little break right now. Looking Good. weary. Mead goes to the rim, flips it up and in, plus the foul. That's a great hesitation dribble right there. Hesitation dribble right around the free throw line, and then once the defender relaxes, she just blew right by her. And the double clutch finish coming right into your living room here. Meet at the free throw line when we return after this timeout. Alexi Mead, the sophomore from California with the bucket before we went to that timeout. And a big momentum swing might be on the cards right now for WKU as they have a two-point lead over Charlotte. Here's a look at the play. The hesitation dribble, as you pointed out, John, freed up the space, and she got to the rim. The double clutch finish plus the foul. And if she's able to convert this three-point play, it would give the toppers a three-point lead with 4.40 to play in the game. Yeah, she scored the last four points, too, and uh, Lexi's just got a lot of heart, a lot of tenacity to her right there. She needs to finish this free throw for, uh, for, for, from the Western Kentucky perspective. She's a good free throw shooter, but it's struggled tonight from the free throw line. She's four out of eight, I believe. Indeed, she is four out of eight for a team that is nine of 25. Ouch. From the free throw line. And that one misses as well. Tapped up rebound, no, and then Meade the foul as Wade grabbed the ball. Just a, it's all, it's just a frustration foul. And a frustrating play for Greg Collins. Yeah, she raised her arm up like, I can't believe I missed another free throw, and then she was hustling, but that was just a frustration foul. Lawrence able to keep her dribble alive. And as we were saying about the momentum swing, there's one that kind of halts it there. The emotions of this game late on beginning to play a factor. That ball is deflected on the pass from McMillan to Busick. Wade inside to McMillan, posting up, draws a double team. Lawrence stop and pop from the free throw line and a pretty That's shot high arching over the outstretched hands of the defender. And Lawrence is leading Charlotte in this fourth quarter. That's just good offense that time. And Lawrence got the ball exactly where she likes it. She loves that pull-up jumper. Lawrence with 15. She's jumped into the scoring lead for Charlotte's. Foster's been quiet of late. Into Allen. Rebounded by Meredith. Just cannot, Western Kentucky just cannot finish next to the basket. Numbers for Charlotte, three on one. Lawrence takes it herself and scores with the left. And it's almost automatic. If you miss a layup on one end, it generally leads to a score on the other end. And suddenly WKU is in a hole. Here's Hayes. Gets in against Busick. Whistle on the drive and a foul on J.C. Busick of Charlotte. That's going to be her fourth. And right here is the, the drive by Hayes, and uh, not a lot of contact. But it puts Hayes to the line for two. Keisha Hayes has not had a try, so she's not missed tonight for Western Kentucky. And she still hasn't. Nothing but net on the first. A positive sign for the Topper fans here at Diddle tonight. Two for two. Seldom have we seen a two for two trip. I think it's the only time. And what it does is when you make the second one, it enables West Kentucky to set up their pressure. McMillan harassed by Meade. Directing traffic with her offhand. Into Lawrence. They want to keep the ball in her hands. That time, though, too strong. Meredith the rebound for the toppers. 
inside the final three minutes. Trailing is Foster. She hesitates and kicks it back out to Meade to set it up. Foster posting up. They can't get it to her yet. Still trying to throw it down to Foster. Instead, it's Meredith up top. And now Meade with five seconds on the shot clock. Between the legs, flips it up with the right, and she's fouled. And McMillan looking around for the culprit. It's her. That's going to be her fourth foul. And I don't think uh, Coach is real happy with that call, to be honest with you. There's uh, not a whole lot of contact. Maybe one, I guess, the body with McMillan. Just a little bit of a hint of a bump there, maybe at the waist. Well, that, yeah, that would be her fourth. That's a big, big foul. As Meade drains it. It is her fourth. Wade also with four among the players in foul trouble for Charlotte. Another lead change. This is number 15. And another two for two trip. Well, if they're going to miss their free throws, I suppose it's better to miss early than late. Yeah, four straight for, for the Lady Toppers. And WKU ahead by two now. Back and forth we go. Wade double teamed on the baseline. Tries to kick it to Lawrence. It's through her fingertips and out of bounds. Turnover number 23 for Charlotte. 25 points off of those 23 turnovers that WKU has scored. Who has that one last little run? Hayes was open. Underneath to Allen, guarded by McGraw. Turns to the right off the back rim, and McGraw comes down with the rebound in a crowd, and then a foul, and a frustrating one for Western Kentucky Meredith called for the ticky tack. Yeah, that was the correct call. That was a foul. And what's frustrating, it's uh, from a Western Kentucky perspective, is a foul 70 feet from the basket, and it puts McMillan at the line. Indeed, Charlotte now in the bonus. That's the 15th foul against WKU. And McMillan, four for four at the line tonight. She can tie it. Used all the rim that time. With the Hilltopper band and the student section. Trying. Behind the goal she's shooting at as well. Trying to make some noise. And maybe they affected that shot. Too strong off the back rim. Rebounded by Meredith. WKU remains in the lead inside the final two minutes. Into Allen as it poked away. Out to Meade to set it up. And a mismatch defensively as Rimbert and McGraw are guarding the guard. Out to the corner here. Here's Hayes. Short. Rebounded by Meade. Boy, she gets a lot of offensive rebounds for her size. Shot clock resets to 20 on the miss. Meade into the pick and finish. scores with the right hand. An important basket for WKU, and Meade has her fingerprints all over this fourth quarter. Lawrence drives to the lane and is fouled, trying to answer on the other end. You can't relax when you score for Western Kentucky, especially when McMillan and Lawrence gets it. Lawrence has played extremely well this first half, this second half, and she has been just deadly getting to the rim. Lawrence She's with eight points on four of five shooting in the fourth quarter alone. 79% from the line, and oftentimes when a player's having a good game, the free throw percentage, go, I think, goes up because you're confident. That was, she had nothing that time but net. Thing about Western Kentucky, too, you have to be prepared on a miss. Charlotte's got a pretty good size advantage on the free throw line. She didn't miss, though. Lawrence knocks down both. She's got 19 to lead all scorers. One point game. Who has the winning play in them? It's out there to be one for one of these two teams. Charlotte won the first matchup in mid January. A modicum of revenge on the line tonight for the Hilltoppers if they can carry this lead inside the final minute. Hayes goes to the rim. Short. McGraw the rebound. Charlotte can take the lead here. 
McMillan and Lawrence ahead of the field, and McMillan scores, Again, plus the foul. Another missed layup leads to a layup on the other end, and they had, Charlotte had their best two players on the break that time. They had McMillan and Lawrence, and here's the, and that time Lawrence decided to take it, drew the foul, and have an opportunity to put Charlotte up by two. A clutch basket for the fifth year player. It, it's, it's uncanny. I don't know what the stat line is on missed layups, how often they lead to points on the other end, but it seems like it's, uh, it's, it's rather high. That key free throw here. And she puts it in to make it a two point game. Timeout by WKU with 42.2 on the clock. I think it's a 30 second. And, and, and of course, when women's basketball, it's like the NBA, you can advance it to half court. What do you want to see out of WKU here out of the timeout? A 12 second plus change difference between shot and game clock here. You want to leave yourself enough time to, if you don't score here, to get another possession out of this game. Yeah, well, they're down two, so they'll take any, any good shot they can. They just put Hope Savari in, and, and, and Hope is a, I think she's a clutch, clutch shooter now. She hasn't been in for a while, so. You know, that may be a little bit of a factor, but I I like to see uh, they're probably going to, Western Kentucky's probably going to get some action going with uh, with Lexi Mead's screen row between her and Jalen Foster. Wouldn't be surprised at that. There's plenty of time left. Both teams have, uh, Western Kentucky has two timeouts left. Charlotte has, has three. You just want to get a good shot. You'll take an open three, but you'll just take any shot right now. Charlotte with four team fouls as well to this point. To point out, Savori, who's played 10 minutes, checks in for the final stretch here. She inbounds. Here's Meade. Crosses over to the left, now back to the right. Driving on McMillan. Great Gives pass. it up to Meredith underneath, and she scores to tie it. 73 all, and it was a phenomenal find by Meade to Meredith. Yeah, she did. She was almost in bad shape. She only had one bailout pass because all the other players were on the other side of the floor, but she made that great pass to Maya Meredith. And now a timeout for Charlotte to nice. advance the ball for them in this tie game with a 3.7 differential between shot and game clock here. So they might be able to hold it out for the final shot as we get a look at this last clutch play from Meade. Yeah, great pass by Lexi. Lexi Meads played extremely well this, this half, scoring and assist and offensive rebounds. Now Charlotte is in a different situation. The game is tied, and they they should, in my opinion, hold it until the to the very end of the shot clock. It's only a 3.7 second difference, and uh, they have a lot of options. Uh, if I'm Charlotte, I want McMillan or Lawrence taking the last shot. That's what I'm wanting. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if Western Kentucky jumps. They may start man, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go zone. Make them beat you from outside. And, uh, so here we go. Charlotte ball with a full shot clock. They go right to Lawrence, a crossover to the left. She can't hit the wow. fall away. Rebounded by Allen and WKU with plenty of time. 20 seconds to figure it out here late. They can go for the winner, all tied at 73. Definitely want the last shot here. Need directing traffic up top. Eight seconds, Savori to Meredith. Five seconds, Meredith with the left hand. Got it. Flips it up and in. WKU in front. Maya Meredith with back-to-back -back baskets for the Hilltoppers. And this one puts them in the lead with two seconds to play. What's ironic is all the layups that have been missed tonight Western Kentucky takes the lead on back-to-back -back layups, and that was not an easy layup. She was going left that time, and that was not a wide-open left-handed shot, but great patience that time by Western Kentucky. Did a little weave on the front, got the ball to Maya Meredith, and she got to the basket and finished. As you said, John, of all the layups to hit tonight in clutch time, what a difficult one. McGraw was right there with her 6-2 frame to challenge it. And Meredith, the long arms, this time with the left, gets the high bounce off the box. Another clinic, and, you know, if you're a young player, the hesitation dribble, we've seen that twice uh, tonight, back-to-back uh, -back, uh, for Western Kentucky, and that was another hesitation dribble that gets the defender to relax just a second, then you explode by. Now, from the, this perspective right now, uh, Charlotte 
Now, the, one of the differences between the men and women's game is in, in the men's game, you take the ball out uh, underneath the goal. But right now, Charlotte has it at half court. From you, Western Kentucky perspective, you don't want to get beat by three. You, you got to think, you yeah. think it's Lawrence, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Lawrence or McMillan, either one. But you, whatever you do, you don't want to get beat by three. You can live with a tie game. They've added a tenth of this of a second to the time. 2.1. Yeah, you can get a couple dribbles off this one. It'll be McMillan to inbound. Lawrence running off of a couple of screens. They get it to her. Here's Lawrence for three in the win. No! And WKU has defeated Charlotte in thrilling fashion here at EA Dental Arena. Great, great finish. Ran a little action that time, coming off a double screen. Good job defensively by Western Kentucky. Tough three, but an open three. Uh, a tough three. It was contested, but still overall good defensive effort at the end by Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers bounce back from a loss over the weekend at Middle Tennessee State. And for Charlotte, still just one win all time for them in Bowling Green. And this could have been a big one as they try to advance up the Conference USA standings. For WKU, it means they stand pat in that second place, and they're back on track after that loss. And got a big game Saturday, Western Kentucky here against Rice. Uh, Western Kentucky 11-4 in the conference. Charlotte falls to 7-8 and eight in four game. It had a lot of fouls, especially in the first half. It had a really good ending to the game in terms of excitement. Let's go back to the final play offensively for WKU. How about that finish once again from Maya Meredith? And then also your thoughts, John, on the final offensive play for Charlotte. They got it to the player that they want to have the ball, and she got a pretty decent look. Yeah, Charlotte, they got the ball to the player they wanted to, and, that, and, and the player they wanted to was, was Lawrence. And uh, it was contested, but you're not always going to get wide open shots with two seconds to go. Sometimes you're just happy to get a shot. So uh, good job defensively. And for Western Kentucky, you know, Maya Meredith this time last year had just torn her ACL. So, you know, take a, a year year from there, come back and get a game winning shot. That's, uh, I'm sure that's a big moment for her. Yeah, a year later from the injury, she's the hero. What a story that is. And what a win it was for WKU by a final of 75 to 73 over Charlotte. The Hilltoppers take their 11th Conference USA win of the season. John, it's been a pleasure. I enjoyed it. For John Butler, for Josh Nedwick, our producer, everybody on our fabulous crew here at EA Diddle Arena, I'm Jeff Milby saying so long. Once again, the Hilltoppers take it over the Niners.